Welcome, everybody, to Lee's Podcast. I'm your host, Lee Yang. Yes, we are back from our pheasant hunting trip. How was it, honey? It was good. It was good, huh? But before we go into the pheasant hunting, there's a few things I want to take care of first that I, I didn't do at my last podcast. Like I said, it was my very first podcast, and so I'm going to make mistakes. So one of them was something that your coworker called me out on. And what was that, honey? That you didn't introduce me. I didn't properly introduce you. I did introduce you as my wife, but I forgot to give them your name. So welcome, honey. You're Lee Yang. She is my wife, yes. The other thing that I forgot to do was to thank my nephew, Tyler. So Tyler, if you're listening, thank you, buddy, for all that you've done up to this point. Because I know I'm going to need you for everything that's going to come from here on out. So thank you. So how was our trip? It was good. Not as romantic as I was hoping for. What? (laughs) It being so cold. How can anybody be romantic in the cold? (laughs) Well, just be glad I didn't snuggle with you. No. Um, But I had um, clothes ready Mm -hmm. because obviously I hunt. I take the boys hunting. So I prepared everything. All the clothes... You know, all the, like, there was, I have, I have three shotguns. Well, two, I borrowed Taz. I know last time we spoke, we were going to take Maya, but I decided not to take Maya because our host or um, the three guys that, um, that was at the pheasant farm, Keith, Jim, and who was the third one? Mike. And Jim has the, Jim was the one that um, guided us with his dog. Um, they had a shotgun, and so you used that instead, right, honey? Yeah. How was that? It was heavy, hard to carry, Uh and um, hard to carry because I also have multiple layers of clothing on. You sure did. I had a lot of weight on me that day. (laughs) Uh, So that made it hard. But also because I'm not, I've never used a gun before, so I was afraid. Very afraid of using it. But you did good. And like he said, and those that watched the um, storyline or the uh, my Facebook, um, try, try, and try again. Mm-hmm. You know, so. But you did good. I try. You shot a six. You shot six. No, 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 no. Six clay targets. Oh, yeah. Missed all of them. Missed all of them. <laughs> but it was fun. I don't think I even come close. Came Wait, are close. you sore? Sore all over. This is probably our fourth day back, right? Yes. <laughs> and I'm still sore. How's the shoulder? That, typically, it's the shoulder. But obviously, yours is the shoulder, both shoulders. Legs, yes? Mm-hmm. From the walking. So the shoulder, shoulders were not too bad, but the inner shoulders. Or like, like under my under. Like under the armpit area. Yes. Yeah. And uh, my hips. Because. Uh, <sighs> A lot of walking. Yes. And we were going up and down hills and uh, walking on ice that I had to be careful with. So we did talk about uh, how many birds did we shoot? We shot at six. How many did you shoot? (laughs) Jim was being very kind. And he said I shot at one. You shot at one. So which one was it? Was it the third or fourth one? That was our fourth one. And after our third one, I was going to give up. And I wanted to tell you and Jim that I just wanted to be picked up and I could go stay at the house. But I decided to keep going. And on the fourth one, I knew it was to my right and I shot to the left. But he was such a good guy. He said that was fine. <laughs> and and he was he was a good sport about it, too. Um, he, he walked with us the entire time. Yep. So, again, uh, great group of guys to uh, hang out with because we were there. We, we didn't start at hunting until, what, 20, 30 minutes mm-hmm. after we got there because you were shooting clay targets. Yep. Did you have fun? That's the ultimate question I'm sure er- everybody wants to know. I can't say that I had fun, but I could say that it was good. It was a good experience. Would I do it again? Never. Uh I did, there's parts of it that I enjoyed. The being with you, obviously, was nice. Um, Nice. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, you know, it wasn't like, oh, it's just me and you, and we're just conversating between the two of us. We're conversating with Keith. We're conversating with Jim, Jim and Mike. So it wasn't like a one-on-one kind of date. Um, That's true. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like we're going out to eat. Right. You know, and we didn't even have breakfast before we went. So we sure did. <laughs> I was doing all of this on an empty stomach, and it was an all day event. So at some point, it just became too much for me, and overwhelming. The entire day was from eight o'clock to eight p.m., and this is because we took those six birds home and had to clean it, mm-hmm. and so it just became a lot. And I think. Part of it was emotionally, I sort of checked out because then it just became another day versus it being a romantic kind of date, right? Correct. So I, you're right. I think it's a great experience for you. And I think we kind of spoke about this and you kind of mentioned it um, before we came on is that the appreciation that um, any, I guess, whoever hunts, regardless, because hunters aren't just always men. They're women also, and the process that they go through in preparing for a hunt, you know, so putting on clothes, right, walking around, carrying heavy items, and you were a really good sport about it. So, honey, thank you. You are so welcome. (laughs) So I hope you will always remember this because um, there might never be a time again like this. (laughs) What's recorded, and the kids would know when they get older, they can listen to this. And as I'm reflecting on this trip, I'm thinking about what I gained from it, right? And so it wasn't the romantic idea, ideal trip, but this trip was a good reflection for me about our relationship. Mm-hmm. And it's um, not that everything has to always go my way, right? Because, you know, I'm kind of a control person that way. <laughs> so <laughs> You sure are. <laughs> I am. So it was nice to, like give up control, and to be like, okay, I'm going to let you take care of a date for me, right? Mm -hmm. And even though there's many things I could say we could have done to make it better, like we could have stopped for lunch, we could have had maybe packed a picnic and have it out in the cold, but it was still very nice and that uh, I got to spend time with you, got to meet some new people, Mm -hmm. and... You know how much I like meeting new people. So that's always a plus when I'm able to learn about people, hear their journeys, and be able to share in their life experience that way. And the lessons that we learn from the people we meet along the way. So this trip was really good. And the sense of meeting Keith and that his journey uh, as a a Vietnam veteran it's a very heartfelt story about the sacrifice he made for a country he or a group of people that he has never met, didn't know anything about as a young 21 year old to give yes. up his life to go overseas and to fight a war that he knew nothing about and then to come back and hear the experience that he went through coming back and not having the support that he needed. So, I mean, I think for me, a lot of our trips is these experience that not the not the things that we do together, but the people that we're meeting along the way. Because I've I think in all of our trip, I could reflect back and rather it be the the couple at Disney World who was sharing their thoughts on Disney, the the couple and Savannah who were sharing their life journey. Mm-hmm. They're all such great stories. Yeah, great lives that were lived and are being lived. So it inspires me to you want know, to do more. Keith's story or Keith sharing his story was unexpected, mm-hmm. right? Because we went there to hunt pheasant, and for Keith to say, "Are you guys Hmong?" and then went and went into his story. You're right. I think I think having conversation with Keith and his brother and his friend Mike was a highlight for me. We we'll agree. Mm-hmm. Well, besides shooting birds, you know, and, and missing <laughs> clay <you>. targets, <laughs> yes. um, you know, and we spoke about that at our last podcast, and you mentioned that already. Like, we went to Savannah and we stayed at the um, bed and breakfast, and we met people there. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and it was unexpected, and it was a um, a welcome, unexpected conversation that we had with them, mm-hmm. you know. And you never know where or who you're going to talk to when you go to these places, huh? and you won't meet them if you don't go. <laughs> so go, <laughs> go, regardless, right? Yeah. So this trip wasn't the most romantic, but we got it done with. So I'm happy that that's taken care of. And I truly appreciate that that you came along. Sure. So, you know, I've been listening to a lot of stories and I love listening to those monk stories. I sure do. So (laughs) I've been listening to a lot of them. And yesterday was all about Valentine's Day. And they were the stories that were being shared was about um, this man. And he's not a really romantic person. And his wife died on Valentine's Day. And he thinks that's because she had a broken heart. Oh, yeah. So... My question to you is, do you think Hmong men are romantics? romantic? I don't know, to be honest. Some of the people I know, well, most of the guys I know are not. And maybe it's the mentality that was passed down from our parents. Because, you know, our parents are not romantic. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, you know, I see, I see this um, romantic... Um, behavior or this this being romantic as a guy being romantic towards his spouse uh, sometimes it seems to be like oh man that's not what men do right like men aren't gonna you know be nice or not be nice but they're not gonna buy flowers they're not gonna take them out to eat you know and i'm not saying all men not all mong men right there might be there's some mong men that are like that where they're like no i'm not gonna do that you know because uh, why should i waste the money on buying a meal right when you can cook for me or we can cook at home you know Uh, but i would like to think that the younger generation like our kids right our nieces and nephews uh, or our nephews that hopefully they would have that mindset of saying or thinking that hey i should take my spouse my partner out to eat you know but even that's not a guarantee (laughs) no no and The idea of being romantic is so different for each one of us, right? For some people, it's affection. And for some people, it's things, receiving something, Mm -hmm. right? So it could be all kinds of different ways, right? Um, But I think in the Hmong community that we knew about Valentine's Day until we came to the U.S., right? So... It wasn't something that was celebrated, and I think um, it's probably not the fault of anybody because I don't think there was an expectation, and now that we've been here so long, there is an expectation from wives that their husbands should be romantic, right? But I also think that's not a one direction. It has to be both ways, right? So if you're forgetting to be romantic with me, I should be romantic with you. Likewise, the other way, right? Mm -hmm. I think, okay, so I think being romantic is a mindset. Um, I think that, um, you know, it's it's something that you have to kind of know that, hey, this is is something I want to do, and I love this person, and I want to do these things with this person, you know? Um, it's it's a whole mindset. It's a whole perception of how they perceive their relationship. Agreed? Mm -hmm. So if I see, let's say, okay, for example, you are my wife. I am married to you. We have four kids, 18 years, right? I love you, right? My mindset is that if that's what you want, I'm taking you out to eat, you know? Um, Some guys, and and we're talking specifically guys here, okay? You can speak on the um, wife side, but some guys, they might not see it like that. They might see it as you're my wife, right? You're supposed to do X, Y, and Z for me, you know, and I take care of all the house chores and stuff like that, and I take care of all the other responsibility, and I I work, and that should be good enough, right? Um, There's this mindset or this mentality where if I don't love you, then, you know, I won't buy X, Y, and Z for you, you know, or I won't do this and this for you, right? Or I gave you four kids already, you know? How am I supposed to show you my love when I already gave you four kids? Isn't that true? I've heard that before, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And a lot of um, people think having kids is love, right? 
I don't know that that's really true neither. Yeah. So. And our parents' generation, right? It is love because if I didn't love you, we wouldn't have so many kids. Right? Correct. And that's so. the old mindset. Uh, I mean, it could be it could be true now, mm-hmm. right? But but because we live in the United States, we live in America where um, we can think of the luxury. We can have these luxury of celebrating Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. you know, or birthdays, anniversary. Well, that's not really true because the other things I like to watch on YouTube is all the people in Laos, right? And they are buying each other a Valentine's gift, right? So this idea of Valentine had spread through the whole world, which is kind of cool in the sense that, you know, everybody can share love, right? But how we go about doing it, right? And the mindset of these people that I watch on YouTube is love is flour and chocolate and money. Oh, so they bought into the marketing of Valentine. Right. Okay. Interesting. Right. And so I kind of think we need to rethink things of Valentine's Day and re-celebrate it with passion and meaning and uh, thoughtfulness, right? I have to say that um, going back to the whole personality and mindset, um, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. And back in those days, there were a lot of love ballads. But again, this is who I am, though, you know, a lot of rock love ballads, you know, um, there's Def Leppard, Aerosmith, you know, uh, a lot of these, um, Celine Dion, obviously, Mariah Carey, 80s and 90s. So I kind of grew up with that mentality of love, you know, and I kind of grew up with that mentality of I want to do something, you know, uh, boys to men, right? Um, so those are my experience, which reflects who I am now. And it allows me to react or not react, but it allows me to show you affection. Most Hmong men are not affection or affectionate. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. I think. I would think so. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So if you're a Hmong man, <laughs> tell us. <laughs> How affectionate you are. For example, for example, PDA, public display of affection. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when I was younger, um, those are stuff that, oh, don't do it, right? It's just, you know, it's embarrassed. Mm -hmm. These kids nowadays, I'm sure they do it. Yep. I I don't know. I don't, I'm assuming that they do because they're a lot younger than we are. Well, there's something that, um, I think even in the older generation, maybe not in the old, old generation, like grandparents who are 50 and 60s, maybe, sorry, not 50s, <laughs> but people who are in their like 60s and 70s who are probably not showing that. But I think, like, I think of one of your brother. And when you were saying that, I thought of him and I thought what he does is re- really sweet. Oh, um, I know who. Oh. We're not going to drop his name. Nope. But... <laughs> And the winter, when they are together, he always, do you know what he does? What does he do? He brings your sister-in-law her coat, and she slips her arms in and slips her arms in the other way. And I just think that's so very sweet. Not that I want you to do that for me, but. Yeah, you can put it on your own coat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but you're right. That's, but he kind of he grew up in that era, that, the 80s and 90s also. You know, and to be honest, he and I, well, I'm assuming he and I, we listen to the same music, mm. you know, not to say that music is going to make you romantic, but, but for me, I am speaking strictly me. It, it is who I am. You know, that's part of, of my mindset of being romantic because I grew up in that age. Mm. You know, I grew up listening to those kind of music. So before we wrap up, is there anything you want to say? I wanted to share that this is our fourth or fifth recording. And our energy is probably different from the first episode you heard. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, which is okay, because we're not always happy. We're not always sad. We have a relationship that's give and take. And it's full of ups and downs. But we try. And we try again. And so... I wanted to share with you all that things aren't going quite as planned. It's okay because you have tomorrow to 
try again. So you mentioned earlier your friend Chloe. What is she? Oh yes. So this is our gonna be trying again on a ro- <laughs> <laughs> on a romantic trip. Yes. So this romantic trip is anywhere within the forty eight states, and we would like for all of you guys to suggest where we should go. Anywhere except for Hawaii and Alaska, because Ali's not flying. I'm not flying. Yep. <laughs> so, and that was thanks to Chloe for that suggestion. But yes, we would love for you all to give us um, your suggestion on where we should go. Yes, comment below、uh, and let us know, and we'll let you know where we're going. All right. So, thank you everybody for joining us on our second podcast.、Um, if you like what you're listening to, please like. Subscribe, share, thumbs up, and click the notification button.、Um, I also have a Facebook page. It's called Li Yang Podcast. You'll know it when you see it green bamboo right up front. So everybody, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.